Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another iceberg video. I know it's late, for one. Usually I upload on Mondays. Um, also, I've just been having problems. Like, today has just been a slew of problems and I just don't feel like it's going to get any better. But today we have tiers six and seven. It should be about the same length as the last one, the last part, because they're about the same amount of uh, movies. But yeah, starting off with The Black Coat's Daughter, it's a 2015 film directed by Oz Perkins, starring Emma Roberts, Kiernan Shipka, and Lucy Boynton. The plot follows Rose, Joan, and Kat, which are three young women, and the timelines and plot are sort of like interconnected, but also sort of like intercut with each other as we find out more information about them uh, throughout the film. Part of the film centers around their boarding school, which they each have some sort of connection to. So during the first part of the movie, we see sort of Rose's story. Then we also get intercut between that Joan story, who is this woman that has escaped from a mental institution, and she short, she sort of like shows up in this way that we're not really sure how she's connected to them yet. And then we also have Kat's story, who sort of like pulls everything together towards the end. Though the film was released in 2015, it actually had a hard time getting funded because it was written in 2012, and I think at the time there wasn't as much sort of desire in the in industry for this type of story yet. Devil's Do is a 2014 film directed by Matt Bettinelli Alpin and starring Allison Miller and Zach Guilford. This movie is sort of a found footage style movie. Um, it's about a couple who is pregnant, obviously, because devils do. Essentially, this is one of those like demon baby, scary pregnancy type of movies. I feel like there's a lot of like Rosemary's Baby-esque type of like pregnancy movies in like the horror space. And this one is another one where the couple is on their honeymoon and they sort of like encounter this weird like um ritual in the place that they're at which is the dominican republic and yeah there's like some sort of like i put air quotes around sort of like voodoo-esque type of ritual culty nature about it that you know sort of curses their child in a way Hide and Seek is a 2005 film directed by John Paulson and starring Dakota Fanning and Robert De Niro. Now when I saw this, I thought this was actually referring to the Korean film of the same name. There's actually quite a few films that have this same name, but this one was specifically talking about the Robert De Niro, Dakota Fanning film. and. And this one is another sort of like, the child is doing something creepy, like there's something sort of like creepy about it. And I believe that I saw this film sometime last year because it looked interesting. And to be honest, I didn't find it that interesting. It's sort of about like Robert De Niro's character being like this widower, like his, his wife has recently passed and um, he's sort of like trying to connect with his daughter, whereas the daughter, Dakota Fanning's character, is sort of like detached and she ends up having this imaginary friend that like weird stuff starts to happen around their house and like it's very like clear to like people on the outside that like, you know, obviously the trauma of losing a parent at such a young age would sort of lead you to like want to have an imaginary friend or maybe be like act out or be like you know sort of mischievous and like that's what everyone on the outside sort of assumes and so it's one of those things where like it sort of touches on like the idea of like loss and children but also like there's still supernatural sort of elements to it that make it kind of creepy. Run is a 2020 film directed by Anish Chaganti and starring Sar Sarah Paulson and Kira Allen. 
I feel like this film was very heavily advertised on Hulu and I was like I have to watch it because it's very Gypsy Rose Blanchard sort of vibes and that's pretty much like what this the kind of plot is. It's about a girl who lives alone with her mother in a and she's disabled and has just a lot of like illnesses and whatnot and she slowly begins to discover that she might not be as sick as her mom is telling her and so she sort of has to like you know fight back and and try to like re regain her strength as like you know she plays this sort of psychological warfare with her mother to try to escape because like obviously you know you love your parent but at the same time like if they're holding you hostage like maybe not something that i was surprised to find out was that this is actually related to the like searching and missing movies so they have like the same directors that are connected to these films and there is like a slight connection between those films but i personally didn't like either of those films searching or missing those are the films where like somebody in their family goes missing and they have to find them through like their electronics and stuff so like it's sort of a found footage film or they're both found footage type of films but like where we're just staring at the screen that the character sees. I didn't really enjoy that concept. I know for some people it was really cool and inventive not a fan. Seconds is a 1966 film directed by John Frankenheimer and starring Rock Hudson and Salome Jens. So this film follows a man who's a little bit jaded by his life, a little bit bored, just not really enjoying what's happening. So he decides to contact this company that sort of like works in plastic surgery to like redo or, you know, rebirth you uh, with a new look. I think the film sort of employs that sort of sci-fi element of like them being able to do enough plastic surgery and like remaking this guy's entire life, like essentially killing off his old identity to give him a new one in the same way that like Face Off kind of does a similar thing where like the technology and like the whole system and everything doesn't really exist, but um, it's still really interesting. This is one of those, the grass isn't always greener type of movies, so if you're like interested in like, you know, feeling grateful about your life, then like, this might be for you. So Session 9 is a 2001 film directed by Brad Anderson, starring David Caruso and sort of more of like an ensemble type of cast. The plot follows a cleanup crew at a mental asylum that is sort of like abandoned, and as they are trying to like clean it up obviously like weird stuff starts happening they end up finding like sort of like the evidence left behind by like the patients and whatnot and one particular thing that they find is like audio tapes of the sessions from the different patients and so obviously session nine is like part of the the title being that being that like session nine is an important plot point of them hearing a session nine tape. This film actually didn't do very well in the beginning, but it's one of those films that has sort of a cult following. So like really only after the fact did people start to watch and kind of like enjoy the film. Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me is a 1992 film directed by David Lynch starring Cheryl Lee and it's based on the series of the same name. So if you enjoy like the Twin Peaks concept or if you just enjoy the series in general then you might enjoy this film. Though the series like has more of an upbeat nature to it, this film is a little more serious. The film follows the investigation around the murder of Teresa Banks, which is a character that is well known in the series, as well as the last week of Laura Palmer's life, which is, again is like another character in the fictional town of Twin Peaks. <laughs> It's one of those things where I think that you could probably watch this film without seeing really any other Twin Peaks related things, but at the same time, like, if you really enjoy Twin Peaks and you, like, enjoy that sort of, uh, like, crime investigation, creepy t sort of vibe, then, like, <laughs> you'd enjoy this. So, Arthur Malediction, or Arthur 
Curse is a 2022 film directed by Bartholomew Grossman and it stars sort of an ensemble cast. It is a French film based on the novel series by Luc Besson and it's the fourth installment in a series. Essentially there's this sort of like fantasy novel series called Arthur and it follows again sort of an ensemble group of kids. It sort of gives me the vibes of like Stranger Things or even like the cast of It or something like that just in sort of like this group of kids who go on like these crazy sort of scary adventures and this particular film is more of a spin-off of the original trilogy in that it is like a film within a film. Essentially a group of friends who really enjoyed Arthur go to the the house where it was filmed and of course as they enter this house of creepiness, creepy things happen and they sort of fall into an Arthur plot of their own. The Ward is a 2010 film directed by John Carpenter and starring Amber Heard. This film is sort of similar to the film Unsane in the sense that it is about a woman who is at a psychiatric facility who's being held against her will and it's again hard to tell like what's real and what's fake. But in this one in particular she's being haunted by a former patient at the psychiatric ward and I think it sort of has kind of that like investigating, figuring out like what happened to this person and kind of getting them justice so they'll like leave you alone in the afterlife sort of deal. There's not too much to say about this film. Obviously if you have mixed feelings about Amber Heard then like take that as you will. Mother's Day is a 2010 film directed by Darren Lynn Boozman and sort of stars an ensemble cast. It's about these like three brothers who sort of come home to their childhood home and when they find that there's obviously new people who live there they decide to like hold them captive and kind of like terrorize them along with like their mother is also there so it, it's yeah it's a very strange sort of vibe but it's also sort of a loose remake of the 1980 film of the same name. Relic is a 2020 film directed by Natalie Erica James and stars Emily Mortimer, Robin Nevin, and Bella Heathcote. The film follows a daughter, mother, and grandmother who are all in like the same home sort of dealing with how the grandmother's dementia sort of affects all of them and this film kind of is another one of those like old people scary movies but at the same time I think it's also trying to like touch on intergenerational sort of trauma so like it it could go like either way in terms of like what you think of horror in regards to like older people. Tin and Tina is a 2023 film directed by Ruby Stein starring Milena Smith, Jaime Lorente, Carlos G. Morol I don't know if it's pronounced like a Y, if it's Morollon or Morollon. I'm not sure. I don't know much about like Spanish names. Also there's Anastasia Russo. If you didn't know, it's a Spanish film. The film follows a couple who after getting married and pregnant lose the pregnancy and they decide to adopt instead of trying again because of her health and so they decide to adopt these twins named Tin and Tina and these twins are kind of creepy, they're kind of weird, they're extremely religious and the woman, the wife in the story is someone who sort of has a little bit of like religious trauma and like it just generally like isn't religious and so when like weird things start to happen when people are getting hurt around them and stuff and you know they're doing things that are like maybe overly religious in a way that can be a little bit scary. I've seen the film, I thought it was really interesting. I wouldn't say it's like the best film ever but I definitely think that it has like something to offer to the sort of like religious trauma along with like pregnancy sort of story and that whole conversation. 12 Feet Deep is a 2017 film directed by Matt Escandari and stars Alexandra Park and Nora Jane Noon. 
When I saw that this film was a Mar Vista film, I immediately thought it was going to be bad, but the concept itself is actually really scary but also really interesting. It's called 12 Feet Deep because these two sisters, I think, decide to swim at their like local pool or whatever and they end up getting trapped underneath or I guess between like the pool and the cover that goes over it and they sort of get like taunted by the custodian that works there and so it's very much like a survival slash like sadistic game sort of film. It's really interesting. I really liked it. Again, I think the concept is really strong and so if you're interested in something that sort of like keeps you on your toes a little bit, I would highly recommend it. Detention is a 2019 film directed by John Shu, and it stars an ensemble cast. It is a Taiwanese film and it's actually based on a video game. The film follows two students in 1962 as they are trapped in their high school at night and as they are trying to escape and also find like a missing teacher they sort of just encounter all of these like creepy supernatural sort of like you know haunted school at night things and the game that this is based on is made by red candle games and they actually made the game um devotion which i think is a really good game i think a lot of their games sort of touch on again like different themes like in devotion it's sort of about like family and like expectations and like that sort of thing and this one obviously sort of is like touching on something else obviously i haven't seen this film but i'm sure that there's like some like political commentary going on with it as well especially because it's set during like heightened political time in taiwan so like i i don't know how people feel about like video games being made into movies it sounds really interesting although i do think that like when you are playing a game that you like you get a lot more from it so like i don't know i guess it depends on the person and the final film for tier six is marrowbone it is a 2017 film directed by Sergio G. Sanchez and it stars sort of an ensemble cast and of course it was made in Spain. I think this film started to get some attention because it has people like Mia Goth and Anya Taylor-Joy in it and so like these sort of more recognizable faces like brought people into this film even though I really don't remember any sort of like advertisement for this film. Either way, it follows the Marrowbone siblings, there's four of them, and they live on this estate where their mother had passed from an illness and they're sort of trying to like keep it low key that she passed because like they're supposed to inherit the house but if she passes before that then they like might be split up and stuff so it's very much about trying to like keep their family together but also sort of keep it like low key they live in a really big house there's also a supernatural sort of horror element to it in that there's sort of this like ghostly presence i guess in relationship to the mirrors in the house and i think a lot of people know that like or a lot of people sort of practice the idea that when somebody passes away that you sort of like cover the mirror so that they like don't try to like continue to stay in this world and so they have this very big mirror that has like sort of a haunting presence that they try to keep covered and like sometimes when it comes uncovered like that sort of like presence feels very heavy. This film was very interesting. It can be a little slow at times, but it definitely has like the cottage core vibes. If you're like if you're a cottage core girly who loves scary things, this would be like for you. All right, that was all for tier 6. Now on to tier 7. Starting off with Bloodline, it's a 2018 film directed by Henry Jacobson starring Sean William Scott. The film follows a man that is violent and like has a tendency I guess for killing and as he has like a newborn and he's sort of starting to deal with the stress of that and as he sort of learns about a student who has an abusive father this sort of like triggers him but also like leads him sort of down this path of like maybe creating a a situation in which his family could be at risk because obviously like when you don't really have a family at first like you can do a lot of this like under the table stuff and like you wouldn't have anything to lose but like now that he has stuff to lose it's like you know 
he has to try to like balance the two. I don't think he's supposed to be like a sympathetic or a likable character so much as I think this film sort of deals with like again like this sort of cycle of abuse and like how violence leads to more violence sort of thing and I think Bloodline sort of has to do like the the title has to do with that sort of idea and like how that sort of violence kind of gets like passed down in in and like through abuse. The Collector is a 1965 film directed by William Wyler starring Terrence Stamp and Samantha Egger. It's also based on the novel by John Fowles. This is another one of those like older films where it's just like a man kidnapping a woman and like this being the woman's like worst nightmare. Uh, it's kind of strange how many of these movies exist especially around the times like in the like 60s, 70s, and 80s when a lot of these sort of crimes occurred and it wasn't until like afterwards like in the 80s and 90s that people were like hey people are actually doing this like this is a thing that actually occurs so like if if being kidnapped as a woman just because like a man is like suddenly obsessed with you like if that triggers you what I recommend <laughs> The Fourth Kind is a 2009 film directed by Olatunde Osunsanmi and starring Mila Jovo Jovajit Jovovich Jovovich. That's hard to say. Mila Jovovich. This film is considered a pseudo documentary. It's not really a mockumentary because it's not like it's not trying necessarily to be a documentary, but it's also not found footage. It very much has like a documentary feel in that like we are the audience and there are essentially like characters within the film, but there are things in the film that are considered to be like reenactments of real events. So like if you've ever seen a documentary where they are talking about a specific event but they obviously can't show it but they need some sort of footage so they reenact it it's sort of like that however this is still considered to be a fiction film because it's about alien type of stuff the film sort of poses itself of course as like a documentary or a look into like the cover-up of a bunch of disappearances around Alaska and it sort of implies that like the government was covering up this sort of like almost alien phenomena that was happening. Gothica is a 2003 film directed by Matthew Kasovitz and starring Halle Berry and Robert Downey Jr. I feel like this film is one of those films where I can't tell if it really has a cult following, but I feel like it should because there's something almost ridiculous about this film. It's giving very much like Japanese horror remake. Essentially the film is about Halle Berry's character as a psychiatrist who like wakes up in the like mental facility part of a prison and um, she doesn't really know how she got there and so she's trying to like piece together like what happened because like someone really close to her was killed and they pretty much think that she did it and like obviously her having no memory of it and everything uh, makes them think that maybe she needs you know a psychological evaluation. Again, I'm really surprised that this isn't like a direct remake of some sort of Japanese film because it very much has the Japanese sort of horror elements of like, I don't have any memory but weird things are happening. Like there's sort of this like ghostly sort of woman that she sees and is sort of trying to like lead her to like solve the mystery of how this girl died and stuff. Like it's... it very much feels that way especially because it's a 2003 film and it just has like those like like the editing and the color grading is very much like of its time so I don't know. The Lie is a 2018 film directed by Vina Sud and starring Joey King, Peter Sarsgaard, and Muriel Enos. The film is a remake of the German film We Monsters and it essentially follows Joey King's character, this like teen girl who on their way to like a camp, her friend goes over the edge of a, a bridge 
and she ends up not surviving and instead of you know reporting it to the police um, the father decides to cover it up because essentially, you know, she, she had pushed her friend. Like, she in the moment got mad at her and pushed her over the bridge. I remember when I saw this film the first time and I personally, I thought it was kind of slow. Uh, there's obviously the psychological element of like, now we're sort of following the parents as they are like trying to cover up this murder but also there's like the weird actions of their teenage daughter afterwards that like you know there's sort of this investigation that's happening like there's a lot of different elements that are in play and again i really wanted to like the film and i really only liked it at the end but if the twist is what makes your film i really don't think that it's that good of a movie so Pinocchio's Revenge is a 1996 film directed by Kevin S. Tenney, starring Rosalind Allen, Brittany Alice Smith, and just like a whole group of other people. If you liked Child's Play, you will like this film because it very much has a very similar like vibe and plot. Like we get a lot of like POV shots from Pinocchio. Um, it, it's like exactly what you think it is. Essentially, this lawyer brings home this Pinocchio doll that was supposed to be buried with the child who was murdered by his father. But before she can give it back as like evidence, uh, her daughter takes a liking to it and um, Pinocchio just starts to wreak havoc on people. The Spiral Staircase is a 1946 film directed by Robert Sedomack and starring Dor Dorothy McGuire, and it's adapted from the novel Some Must Watch by Ethel Lena White. If you like the movie Hush, you might also like a movie like this, in which this man is terrorizing mute women, or like essentially disabled women. Essentially, this mute woman who lives in a mansion is, like, stalked and terrorized by a man who targets women with disabilities. If you're really into, like, film history, then this might be a film for you just to sort of, like, learn a little bit more about some of the predecessors of, like, slasher films and, like, sort of the film noir genre. Uh, yeah, if you're into that sort of stuff, then, like, this would also be a great film for you. Wounds is a 2019 film directed by Babak Anvari, starring Army Hammer, Dakota Johnson, and Zazie Beats, or Zazie Beats. It's based on the novella The Visible Filth by Nathan Ballingrud. I'm not gonna lie, this film does not look good to me. It's about a man who picks up a phone that was left at his bar, or like the bar that he works at, and like weird stuff starts to happen. I will say the one thing that I do like about this film, even though I haven't seen it, is that uh, it's about a man that starts to unravel psychologically, and I respect that. Like, we need more men be crazy films in which Nobody believes them when something weird is happening. Barbarian Sound Studio is a 2012 film directed by Peter Strickland starring Toby Jones. The film follows a sound engineer who goes to the Barbarian Film Studio in Italy to work on a film that he thinks is about horses but finds out that it's actually an Italian giallo film which is sort of like an exploitative film and it becomes increasingly more difficult and more disturbing as he works on this film because there's a lot of like, even in the trailer, there's a lot of like squishy, stabby sounds. <laughs> Truth or Dare is a 2018 film directed by Jeff Wadlow starring Lucy Hale and sort of uh, a little ensemble cast. And it's sort of like a part of like Blumhouse Productions. There's actually a lot of Blumhouse films on here. I don't know if anyone remembers when this film was coming out, but this was another one of those like creepy smiley trailer type of films. And this is another one of those like a group of friends decides to play a game and then like some supernatural something starts to happen. Essentially the group begins to like face repercussions in real life if they decide to like dodge the truth or dodge the dare. like. It's one of those films that's just not very complicated. It's very like, 
I don't know. I feel like it's one of those films where, like, the trailer just really does everything for it. So if the trailer interests you, then, like, you'll like the film, but if it doesn't, then you might not. Of Unknown Origin is a 1983 film directed by George P. Cosmatos and starring Peter Weller. It's also based on the novel The Visitor by Chauncey G. Parker III. The film follows a man who just becomes increasingly more erratic and kind of insane as he is trying to renovate this brownstone and there's a rat that he cannot catch. It's very much Gordy from Ned's The Classified, you know, like he's just being driven insane by the fact that he cannot seem to find and kill this rat. And apparently the title refers to the like idea or more so like the misconception that rats don't really have an, a known origin. So like they just kind of appear out of nowhere, which I think we all know is like not true. Like. <laughs> The idea of someone going insane by this like simple fact sort of reminds me of what happens towards the end of the conversation if you've ever seen that film. That film's a really interesting film as well. It has some psychological elements but it's not really a horror film. Still Slash Born or like Stillborn is a 2017 film directed by Brandon Christensen starring Christy Burke and Jesse Moss. The film follows a woman who was supposed to have twins, but one of them ended up not making it. And so as she is caring for the surviving child, um, there's just sort of this like supernatural sort of like, you know, again, I, I feel like there's a lot of these sort of like pregnancy demon child related sort of plots in like psychological horror. And like, it's understandable because like, there's a lot of PTSD in regards to, in regards to like pregnancy, whether it's like during or after. So like it makes sense that there would be a lot of films sort of in this genre about the trauma and li like maybe the psychosis that some women experience after childbirth and especially like in regards to something like this where you've lost one but you also have one that survives and like this sort of like almost guilt maybe that could build up with that. Obviously the trigger for this film is literally the plot so like if pregnancy or like you know miscarriage type of stuff is triggering for you obviously this would not be like the film for you. The next film is a French film so obviously I'm gonna have a t hard time pronouncing it. Um, it's known as The Ordeal um, but it's the name is Calvert. Again, I took Spanish in high school, so I don't know much about French, French pronunciation, but it's a 2004 film directed by Fabrice Duwells and starring Laurent Lucas. The film follows a man who on his way home for Christmas, his van breaks down in this sort of like remote sort of area where there's like an innkeeper who sort of takes him in and as he's staying there, the innkeeper becomes more like obsessed with him and we find out that his wife left him and so there's sort of like a sexual implication to like this man's obsession with him. The Uninvited is a 2009 film directed by the Guard Brothers and starring Emily Browning and Elizabeth Banks. It's actually a remake of A Tale of Two Sisters based on like the Korean folktale. I think we sort of talked about that same Korean folktale um, a few tears ago where it was like actually a Korean film. And of course it has like a very similar plot to that film of like where one sister was in sort of a mental facility and as they come back um, the relationship between them and the rest of their family and sort of like the tension and the trauma related to it is sort of like what goes on in the film. Now that I think about it I'm pretty sure the film that we did talk about was A Tale of Two Sisters. I sincerely thought this film was going to be about something else based on the poster because I'm pretty sure I remember like seeing this poster um, many, many times in the f in the past. And so had I known that this was really just about like a girl who was traumatized after her mother's passing and like sort of dealing with the trauma of like coming back from a mental facility to a new sort of like family dynamic. 
then I probably would have been more interested in the film. I think this one just is like, it suffers from its own, its own poster. Fade to Black is a 1980 film directed by Vernon Zimmerman starring Dennis Christopher. If you are a creepy film buff or just a film buff in general who sort of likes like a slasher-esque film, then Fade to Black I think would be for you. It follows a man who is a film buff who decides to go on a killing spree just killing people who like essentially are just like mean to him, rude to him, whatever, all while also stalking a Marilyn Monroe lookalike that he's like kind of like in love with. Very much deranged man kills people. The Killing of a Sacred Deer is a 2017 film directed by Yorgos Lanthimos and starring Colin Farrell, Barry Keoghan, and Nicole Kidman. The film follows a surgeon whose life sort of gets turned upside down when this teenage boy who's sort of like related to his past shows up and like starts to mess with his current like idyllic life. I remember when this film came out and I really wanted to see it because it has that psychological element of somebody from your past shows up and I'm pretty sure in this case it is the teenage boy's like father had died by the hands of the surgeon and so like he's sort of coming back in this like revenge sort of nature and like obviously he has to be like subtle about trying to like hurt the surgeon's family but also like the final film in tier 7 is Under the Shadow. It is a 2016 film directed by Babak Anvari and starring and this is a <laughs> this might be a little difficult Narjis Rashidi, Avin Manshadi and Bobby Nadiri. The film is set during the 1980 Iran-Iraq war in Tehran and this mother and daughter after their their house is um, destroyed, they begin to be haunted by this sort of like evil spirit within their house. I'd never heard of this film before like looking over this iceberg mainly because like I don't know very many like Persian films but this actually looks pretty good. It looks pretty interesting especially because I think again the context will like sort of lend itself to like the overall plot even though like the plot itself is kind of like simple in that aspect. But that is all for tier 6 and tier 7. Again, just a reminder, next week will be a podcast episode and the week after that we will get into tier 8 and or tier 9. It really depends on like time constraints because tier 8 has 29 films and tier 9 has 48. Um, and tier 10 rounds off at 67 films. So yeah. But that is all for this part. Let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.